I guess you can't say sun's out, gun's out anymore because the moon's actually out. <coughs> anyway, second down and Garner, second and manageable. It is a pretty, the sun is not totally set, Jay. It's nice night. Yeah, we've got some, we've got some darkness and some still sunlight. In between. Oh, ter terrific analysis. We've got some in between action going on with the weather. I think this is what they call the shank of the evening, partner. <laughs> Just trying to describe the sky. Dusk maybe is a more appropriate term, either one. It's still a nice night for football. We're happy to have you with us. Garner from the eye on second down and medium. Holloway through a couple of defenders and moves the chains again. A Garner J so far tonight has done what they do best. Clayton came in tonight, and one of the keys defensively, and Clayton's main key always on defense, is trying to stop the run. They've had a tough time doing that at times tonight as Garner has had some gaping holes offensively. Up front for the Trojans, they've just done a better job of staying low on their blocks, creating running lanes. Matt Butler, the big left tackle there, he's leading the way on that left side of the line of scrimmage. Edie back in there and carrying a couple of men with him. Williams holding on for dear life and finally forces him to the turf. But what does Clayton need to do defensively to, to make a couple stops here and get back in the game? I think they're going to have to bring people up in the box. Some of the secondaries are going to have to do some corner blitzes, bring a safety up there, defensive line slants, something to try to disrupt the momentum of that offensive line and to slow down this running game. Toss to Edie. And spun down after a short game. Nice defensive play in the open field by J.B. Collins, the 5'8 junior safety. Another third down for Garner. Remember, they scored both their touchdowns on third downs tonight. Play action. Broken Burrow flushed. And going down for a sack. Clayton defense swarming there. They were... Not fooled, and whistle stopping action as well. A couple guys were in there. Gleisner was one of the first men to hit him, along with Cole Fitzsimmons. And is there a flag as well? I'm not sure why the stoppage, Jay. There is a flag from the back judge. So Andrew Frisk with the flag, and we will try and sort things out. Eight combined penalties tonight in the first quarter and change. I don't know that I've ever seen officials take this long to talk about flags yet. They involve everybody. <laughs> All four officials up there discussing it this, and it seems like Garner is backed up, so it looks like they feel like it's on them, but they haven't made the signal yet. Another personal foul called on Garner. It's a dead ball foul. Dead ball after the play, personal foul called against Garner. It's going to be fourth down for the Trojans. Things seem to be a little chippy on the field tonight, Jay. And that play wasn't really anything egregious that yeah, we could see. And the referees discussed it, so a little bit of discussion on the sideline between the coaches. Coach Leach trying to find out what happened, but still a huge impact there, the personal foul. And Clayton's going to get the football back. Jarreau will punt for the second time tonight. His first punt went 55 yards. If he can do that again, Clayton would be backed up very deep in their own end. Stancil is the deep man. It's a high floater. Stancil will return it. And spun down to the 25. Nice job on special teams there by Garner. Now Clayton has his partner to chip back into the lead. So important on special teams, Chris. You're a cover man to stay in your lane. Then also, you can't have any missed tackles because big plays, big returns happen when a cover man either gets out of his lane and creates room to run, or if there's a missed tackle or two, and then the returner can break free. But there, the Trojans, again, all night long, have really done a good job staying in their lanes, making good tackles, and forcing Clayton to drive the length of the football field. Weiser remains in the game at quarterback. Trying to spark the offense. Quick throw to the outside is caught and then spun down immediately is Will Mann, the 6'2 junior, with his eighth catch of the year. I like the play call there. Quick, easy throw, getting the ball out of the hands of Weiser, the defensive line, not having time to get pressure. Second down and seven after a three yard <coughs> Two minutes have elapsed in this second quarter. Handoff to Norther, and nothing doing there. 
Right now it's been tough. Renato has to over play to establish anything on the ground, partner. It really seems to make them one-dimensional offensively. And that's going to be tough. They've got to have some sort of ground attack to keep this corner team honest. Otherwise, they're just going to pin their ears back. Those defensive linemen are going to come after the quarterback because they know it's going to be passing situations. So here it looks like another passing situation probably for Clayton. But at some point here in some of these drives, they're going to have to get some running uh, lanes opened up for their ground attack. Weiser getting the call from the sideline. Pressure, and now rolls out, looking, and heaves it downfield, and double cover! Nice! It's caught by Carter for the first down! Thirty-three yard completion to Carter. That's his second catch of the night, and a huge catch there for the big wide receiver for the Cowboys. Tell will always jump out on the screen, and Carter right there jumping over the defenders, making a huge play—a play that his team needed to change the field position here, a spark play. But just an outstanding job of watching the ball into his hands, the hand-eye coordination, and the high point of the ball. And then Clayton nearly turns it over a low snap, and Weiser had to be almost like a shortstop on a baseball field that time, and just stopped the ball. Huge loss of six yards, makes it second down and all the way to Highway 70 for the first down. A lot of landmarks around this place. <laughs> Weiser in the pass, tipped, and called incomplete. Oh. Was it intercepted? No, incomplete. Well, it was tipped once, and then almost caught by man, and then almost picked off by Garner. That was an impressive play. I think about four different guys touched the football. Ball well, was in the ear for a while. After first contact, a couple different guys had opportunity for it, but Lizer, lucky that wasn't picked off, but his guy almost had a, a chance to catch that ball. But here, third and long situation, you've got to be careful with the football. Mm -hmm. Have to get to the corner 30 for the first down. They throw a quick slant pass over the middle. It's caught, but not nearly enough yardage for the first down as Robertson made the catch. So now you're fourth down at about eight or so, Jay. It's almost in that no man's land, isn't it? It's going to be too far for a field goal, so I think for Clayton, they need another spark play. You have to be aggressive. I think they're going to go for it here. With this opportunity on fourth down, I would look for number 88. He's your star player. I would try to get him the ball, throw it high up in the air, and let him high point it. They will go near side, tipped away, incomplete. Nice play by Andreas Harris to knock it away from Carter. I don't know that it would have been enough for the first half, even if he makes the catch. Yeah, it was tough there. He broke the out route off a little bit short, hoping to catch that ball and get a run for the first down. But kind of a point for wide receivers is when you're going towards the first down mark, you want to make sure you get past the sticks and then come back to the football. So if you do get tackled once you catch the ball, you still have the first down, but a little bit too short there and the ball a little bit too high. Garner getting off the field. 7.55 to go, first half. Garner by 12. And the third <coughs> offense on the field once again. Braxton Broken Burroughs had a nice day just managing the offense. Hasn't had to do too much. He is 3 of 5 through the air. And they give it to Stevenson, the first man through, and Clayton was waiting on that one. Right on the middle, number 34, Anthony Stevenson. It's a Garner offense, Jay, that just as we said earlier, does what they do, and they do it very well. I think one of the things that, that both these programs really have going forward, and now that Coach Jinx is at Clayton, he can establish this at Clayton, is in the youth programs, the Pop Warner programs. Everyone runs the same offense, so by the time you get to this level, this offense or defense has been ingrained in you since you were a child. Well, it's so important to know the schemes, but also, too, as a young football player, whether you're in Pop Warner or middle school, is you always look up to the high school players and you oh, imagine yourself playing on that terrible. football player. Big play for E. Breaks it free into the secondary, and E scores for the third time. Boys, tackling, tackling, tackling. 62 yards, and the Trojans score again. First touchdown catch of the season for Edie, partner. He's a multi-talented football player. 
here catching the ball out of the backfield with his speed going along the sideline. He outstretched the last defender, finished off the run there. But he's a home run hitter for his team. Another long, explosive play. This Clayton defense hasn't found an answer to stop Edie. Giroux with another extra point. But man, Edie can score in so many ways. That was just a little swing pass, and he did really everything on his own. We can run the ball, Chris. He can pass block as well. They are catching the ball out of the backfield. An outlet for Broken Burrow. <laughs> the defense was focused on the run up the middle. Then they had to kind of collapse back on Edie. But with his vision and his speed, he took it the distance. Again, he's a really talented football player, but he excels in all phases of the game. Somebody that's going to be a big weapon at the next level at college next year. Edie with offers right now from Virginia, East Carolina, Furman, Navy, Harvard, and Hampton. And I imagine more are coming in his direction as well. They just gave a salute to us. Yeah. Howard a player when you see him on the street. Yeah. What's that old saying? Real recognizes real? <laughs> He's a baller. He recognizes your real. He recognizes you. He recognizes That's, yeah. Giroux to kick it away. Ricks for bigger guard Collins and Stancil, the deep man. As the Comets try to get something going offensively and needing a score in a bad way. 236 total yards for Warner, just 50 for Clayton so far tonight. Trying to spark the offense and special teams. Collins with the return, and he is going nowhere. Molly walked inside the 10 yard line. Again, Chris, the cover men are flying down the field. They look like they got shot out of a cannon, staying in their lanes, beating the blocks up front, and then running in packs. There's nowhere for the return men for the comments to run the ball to. That special team is really helping out this defense now. A long field for Clayton to start their drive. Wisdom Hinton made the smart play there in special teams. And Clayton will start from their own nine, needing to go 91 yards for Pater with just a shade over seven minutes left on this first half clock. Pressure, Lizer throws downfield and just threw it too long for Robertson. I'm curious, Jay, as you go back and now we dissect this first half a little bit, Cable started the game, then you bring Lizer. It seemed like Clayton had something going there on the last drive for Cable before they changed to, to Lizer. Would you go back to Cable? I think it's a situation where both guys have talent. You have confidence if you're coaching both to produce for your team. Lizer was a starter. Now he's healthy enough to come back in. But you really got to see which guy has the momentum and who's leading the offense better in this ballgame. For Cagle, he's had five or six days off because they haven't been able to practice until yesterday. And Lizer, he's been out for a month, so both guys haven't had that consistency. So whichever guy helps the offense best is the one that you're going to see go with throughout the rest of this ballgame. Not much of a game there as they went back to the ground. And now Clayton will face third down and 11 once again. Comets have really struggled on third downs tonight. Two of, uh, beg your pardon, two of six. Pressure. Good God. Heiser just throws it away. That's going to be a safety. But might be grounding either way. It's going to result in a safety. Ball went out of bounds. So Garner again putting pressure on the Comet quarterback. And it should result in two more points for the Trojans. Intentional grounding is the call. Since it occurred in the end zone, it is a safety. So those two points Garner was chasing, Jay, they just got back. Davion Carrington came off the edge, number 12 right there, unblocked. He came through there fast and furious. No one even touched him. And nowhere to throw the ball. Laser just looked up. He had a defender right in his eye and tried to get rid of it. Do you think that makes up for the non-pick six he has earlier because he got the safety now? Yeah, he made a mess for himself. Okay, all right. Because sometimes when you have an opportunity that you weren't able to finish out because sure. of the penalty, yeah. it makes you want to step up and make something else happen there. He did. He made a play for his team. Two points. I'm sure he's going to try to get another interception. <laughs> he did it yeah, there to, so. to really get cut for it. And this has been that first half has been dominated by Gordon. They 
it. Jalen Trojans have certainly looked impressive in every phase of the game tonight. Well, they are good ground attack. Those are special teams. Their defense really physical, but also fast. They've slowed down this passing attack. Clayton. Clayton is prolific through the air. They've done outstanding things this season with their quarterback play, their wide receivers. But they've been stymied all night so far. That's because of the pressure up front. Also, the secondary doing a good job of changing their coverages. I think Royer will get the football back as the Trojan band has had to play a lot tonight. They're rocking down there. They are. Donovan Evans is the deep man for Garner as the Comets get it placed up on the tee. Jorge Alonzo ready to kick. Driving kick. Evans, who has one kick return for a score this year, will return it here for Garner. Looking for another pretty in special teams, and he almost broke it. But a big return, and Garner will have a short field to try to add to this 21 point lead. A 33 yard return there for Evans, and we'll see the Trojans on the field again. This car is skilled and has so much speed. And once they get the football, they have the ability to make guys miss. They're blocking up front there on the return, it was good. Well, they're excelling on special teams right now. Blue crew out in full force tonight. They haven't slowed down. They haven't. I wish I had half that much energy. Four wide receivers. Edie in motion again. They pump fake to Edie and go deep down the field and quadruple coverage, and it's incomplete. Savion Jackson on the pressure that time. Of course, I love the play call there. Edie scored a touchdown on the swing route earlier, so there they brought him out on the swing route, had him put his hands up like he was going to get the football, then Brokenborough threw the ball over the top. Good coverage by Clayton, but I like the design by the offense coordinator, Adam Hamrick, to try to use his success on a previous play. Yep. on the play action to make another long throw by their quarterback. Six minutes and some change here for the first half. Toss to Edie. Already has two scores on the ground tonight and might have a third. Edie inside the five. First and goal, Garner. Touchdown saving tackle that time by J.B. Collins. A 30-yard run for Edie, who nearly scored again. This was just another toss sweep to the outside. Again, Stevenson up front, pounding his defender, clearing the path for Clayton here. They're doing a good job stopping the run, but then all of a sudden, Edie, you have a huge explosive play. They haven't found a way to slow him down. But an injury out on the field. Yeah, official timeout for the injury. Comet is down on the far side of the field. And we will try and see who it is. Trainers from both schools are out as we try and put the, the specs on to see but so many people are surrounding the, the young man it's tough to see who is down there on the far side of the field for Clayton. 21-0 Garner Jay, 6.03 to go here in the first half and Garner on the precipice of another score. A perfect start for the Trojans here at home homecoming it's a game that everybody circles at the start of the season one of the games that you want to make sure you put on a good effort for your home we got here early for the game, Chris. There's a homecoming parade. A lot of students, families, fans were here a couple hours before sitting in on the festivities and just an outstanding atmosphere here tonight. And looks like the Clayton player is going to be okay. Yeah, it's Collins, who's being helped off the field. He's been a dynamic playmaker for the Comets in a variety of ways. He was the one that made the tackle on Edie. Perhaps just had the wind knocked out of him, and now will have to come off for one point. Hunter Jinks in the comments needing to get something figured out. They've been down by double figures a couple times at halftime this year and have been able to find a way to come back and win. We'll have to come from way back tonight in order to try and snap the 31-year losing, 31-game losing streak to Garner. 
First and goal for Garner. 6.03 left in the half. And Butler calling for a timeout and gets one. So Matthew Butler was in there as a big blocking back. The biggest fullback you'll see, 6'4", 265. Yeah, I don't think I would want to run to try and tackle him either. Corner has one timeout left. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be happy if I was lined up in front of him if I was a defender. Any time you see someone as skilled and athletic, as big as Butler is, if you're a defender for Clay, you want to highlight where he is on the field. And you figure if you're a defender, through your film study, Garner is probably going to run behind big number 79. Shrine Bowl selection, all conference last year, has 21 Division I offers. And they're from big time programs, too. Almost all of his offers are from SEC or ACC schools. And a majority of them are from Power 5 schools as well. He's been a guy that's been on the radar for a while. For a couple of years now, he's played tight end. Here he's playing fullback, defensive end, defensive line, offensive line. He's a guy that you can tell is going to get even bigger. 6'4", 265 right now in high school. But he's got a big frame, long, athletic, very agile for a big guy. Also played basketball last year. How would you like to guard him? I don't think so. Butler lining up as the blocking back again. And will go in motion. Garner's going to run behind him. Stevenson is the first man through. Gets the carry. Stevenson shakes off a tackle and is in. Touchdown. Ninth rushing score of the year for Stevenson. And Jack Garner has their third rushing score of the night. They're just controlling the line of scrimmage. Butler went in formation towards the left side of the line, then started trotting towards the right side. You could tell the defense shifting over towards him, but he just cleared the pass. Stevenson ran right behind him. Clayton missed a tackle. Stevenson ran through another tackle and found his way into the end zone. Extra point is good from Giroux. And at the halfway mark of the first half, Garner's in front 28 to going right for Garner and right now for Clayton it, it is certainly go time for the Garner. Well, it's been a big place for Garner. It's Edie stepping up catching the ball in the backfield. Long runs the offensive line has been stable up front. One thing is for Garner they're going to clean up some of their penalties but Clayton just hasn't found an answer on offense. And they need to slow down Garner's running attack, but also they've got to find a way to score some points. They need to throw the ball better, throw the ball downfield, because right now they're throwing just short passes. But Garner hasn't missed tackles, so once the ball is thrown, they're able to corral the ball carrier. And they just haven't been any big plays for the conference. Uh, like the blue crew, Garner's been lining up the scoreboard tonight. Corbin Garner. I'm not sure if they're putting their phones out for life or if they're taking a bunch of selfies. <laughs> Probably a combination of both. Dude, that's the best selfie ever. <laughs> well, it wouldn't really be a selfie being an hussy, wouldn't it? Since <laughs> right. there's more than one person in there. <laughs> we might even be in the picture up at the booth. That's, that's, good, that's right, yeah. A high end over end <laughs> kick as we're back to action. Short kick off, and it's Stansel who collides with his teammate. He's going to try and make a play. Better field position this time for Clayton. There is a flag on the field. <coughs> so we will wait to see how this one is sorted out. Still trying to sort this out, Jay. Referee Strickland has been busy tonight. Black in the back. Called on Clayton, so back on half the distance. All right, Jay, what's the thought process here for Clayton? I would run the football, try to hold on to the ball, give your defense a break, because you know right now, the defensive line is going to pin their ears back, try to come after Weiser, but also too, Chris, it's a perfect situation to throw a screen pass. Use that pressure from that deep line against them. Let them get into the backfield, then throw the ball over the top. 
and hopefully that'll slow down that pass rush. Awaiting the ready for play. And now we're ready to go. And that pass hit somebody in the helmet. About four different comments were there, a couple of Trojans as well. And doink. Brings up second down for Clayton. And kind of a microcosm of the night there for the comments. They just haven't had rhythm, Chris. And again, maybe that's because they haven't been able to practice at their normal schedule. And whenever you're a passing team, it takes so much rhythm precision, consistency, everyone has to be on the same page. Right now, they just haven't been able to click. They are going to try and run the football now on second down. And nothing doing. Corbin. As they went to a number 53, but, but Martin, that time, and he didn't get a whole lot. But Chris, if you're an offensive lineman for Clay, this is really where you have to step up. And you just have to come together as a unit and say, hey, guys, we need to do a better job. Our passing game hasn't been on tonight. We have to run the football. And Garner's just winning the one-on-one -on -one matchups along that D line. Clayton, two of six on third downs tonight. Facing a third and 12 from their own seven-yard line. Lizer with pressure coming, throws down the field and incomplete. Looking for Robertson, and the Garner defense will get off the field once again. It just seems like every time Lizer drops back, he's got one or two Trojans chasing after him. Not a lot of time to throw the ball. He rolled out towards the right and then tried to throw the ball back towards the left side of the field. A dangerous throw there. You get the secondary a good job of staying locked down in their coverage. Another punt attempt, high snap, and hey, guess what? Another flag. Before the play can begin, they'll fly. This will be the tenth combined penalty tonight. Some of this probably due to the lack of practice these clubs have had over the last week or so due to the hurricane. Encroachment caught on Garner. That's the only thing I can think of why there are so many problems tonight. Well, it's frustrating if you're a player, too, because you want to have a good flow to a ball game while you're playing. And it's tough when you have to stop and start on every possession. Garner nearly got to that punt. Instead, forces a errant kick there from Clayton. And Garner will have another or have more really good field position to start this drive. A 23-yard punt. Five minutes to go. That drive took a minute for Clayton. And now if you're Garner, do you just try and salt away this first quarter or first half clock, Jay, or do you just try and make a quick score here? If you're Garner, I wouldn't change anything that you're doing right now. It's all work. The toss sweeps, Stevenson's quick hitters up the middle, the ground game. I would continue to run the football because your running backs are having great success, especially once they get to the outside. They've been able to make tacklers miss. They're going deep. Got a man. Touchdown. Digimon Harris. Garner scores again. It's all working for Garner tonight. Well, Chris, another play action pass. Going for the deep ball, Harris, one-on-one -on -one coverage down the left sideline. He beat his man off the block, but then high-pointed the football over the shoulder catch. Just great job executing by Broken Burrow, the long pass and play. The corner again, the quick strike. They're another explosive play for their offense. Five combined scores for Garner, two through the air, three on the ground. Harris with his first touchdown catch of the season. He just picked up his first scholarship offer from Shaw last week. And Jay, right now, Garner is just doing whatever they want. Passing game now, explosive. They're running game to what they've leaned on. It makes it so tough if you're a defender for play, because what do you stop, what do you take away? Everything is working. So right now, if you're playing, you've got to find a way to get pressure. That's the only thing that's going to slow down right now. How about this? Our guy, Evan Butterich, doing major work up here in the booth for us. In the last three minutes and 19 seconds of game time, Garner's on a 23-0 spurt. That's something you would see with the basketball team at Garner, but to be up 23-0 in three minutes in a football game is 
They're high flying. Yes, sir. Our man Evan Slam Duncan with the stats up here, giving us the good stuff. Best stat man in the league. Giroux with another touchback. Jay, we've seen some impressive football teams this year in the four double-A ranks, but I think from what I've seen in the first half, teams are going to have a tough time continuing with Garner as the season continues and into the playoffs. Garner can run the football. They've got an offensive line that's very stout up front. Their defense is fast, they're physical, they're tall, and they're big. Their special teams has done an outstanding job covering the football on kicking situations. They've got a coach that's been deep in the playoffs, has great experience, they've got veteran leadership. They really have everything you're looking for in a team. A great home crowd. They've got a bright future once they get to November and December because it's going to be a tough out here with teams playing against the tradition of Garner. Clayton going to run the ball, just try to chew up a little bit of the time and keep Garner's offense off the field. Brock Swackhammer, one of our favorite names, got the carry that time for the Comets. I mean, let's remember, this is, Clayton still has a whole other half to go, Jay. No reason to think the Comets can't get back in this game, but they've got to get something on the board here late in this half. Well, they have talent, and you can see just out on the field watching them play. They've got some great athletes themselves, but they just haven't been able to put it together tonight. They have confidence that they can come back. They've come back from other deficits this year, but they've only been two touchdowns. For them, though, they can't worry about the scoreboard. They just need to worry about getting a drive here. Keeping it on the... Keeper is John Ross Parrish, who's also spent time at quarterback this year. He was the backup when Cagle was the starter. Uh, but didn't get a whole lot that time. Got three, it brings up third down. Chris, with Clayton, they want to play up-tempo, they want to play fast, but they haven't been able to all night because of the defensive pressure from Garner and also because of the penalties. They haven't been able to pick up any first downs to get a true rhythm going on offense, and that's a big part of their offensive play calling is that fast-paced offense, and it hasn't been able to click tonight. And off, up the middle, and again, nothing doing for the Cubs, virtually no game. And Clayton's going to have to punt once more. It's the third different quarterback Clayton has used tonight, Jay. Right now, Clayton trying to grasp at anything for momentum offensively. They're trying to find a spark. They're trying to find somebody that can maintain a drive. Another situation here on special teams. Looks like they're going to go for it, Jay. Fourth and two deep in their own end. Perhaps letting the play clock run down. Nope, looks like they are going to go for it. Parrish hands it away. Straight ahead. First down for the Comets. Leo Swackhammer, who got the call again for Clayton. And maybe that's something that will get the Comets going. Ten-yard pickup. That's a situation where your back's against the wall. For an offensive player for the comments, you know if you don't pick this up, you're giving Garner the football a great field position. Your coach is putting confidence in you that you can pick up those two yards and the offensive line leading the way there. Swackhammer running physical to get that extra yardage. You know, we asked Coach Jinks if he's surprised at where his team is at in his first year. I mean, remember, he didn't get the job at Clayton until very late in the summer when the Comets really didn't have a chance to go through a whole lot of stuff in his system. As Swackhammer fights ahead, Carrington on the stop, and he said, yeah, he said, you know, I think the, the moment where they really bought in was during the summer they went down and did a seven-on-seven -seven at Scotland County and beat Scotland <coughs> County in that seven-on-seven, -seven, and that's where it started clicking for the team there and then at Mount Olive at the FCA team. Isn't team. it amazing how your camaraderie, how your team is built, Maybe it's not even during the season, it's before that starts in those practices that nobody sees the, de the development of your players in moments like that. You know, talk to us about that. He remembered that point like it was yesterday when his team came together, when they started to really bond and when he saw the potential they had. Parrish on the carry, counts on the stop. Third down and five coming up for Clayton with 90 seconds remaining in the half. And he said this team has improved every single week. And I'm sure he can still see some growth tonight. 
but certainly some coachable moments coming up in the next couple minutes. Swag hammer on the counter. And nice. lights ahead for a first down into Garner, ter Garner Territory. One of the few times tonight the Comets have crossed midfield, gain of eight. Well, they've run Swack Hammer off the left tackle on the left side of the line of scrimmage. That's where they found success. And here a drive finally going, new quarterback, new players in on this drive. Finally finding a way to run the football here, picking up yardage, getting pushed up front. Under a minute to go in the first half. Garner bringing pressure. Parrish, the left-handed quarterback, down the field. This is caught, and the Comets have it first and goal. Robertson with the big catch before Frederick brought him down. Look at Parrish threading the needle there, partner. Great play-action pass with the blitz coming from the linebackers. There was a hole in the middle of the field. But throwing the ball deep over the top, just an excellent catch, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and a big explosive play for the Comets. 45-yard pass, Clayton now has it first and goal. Swaghammer trying to fight down near the goal line, and he stopped short. Inside, now down to about half a minute left, and Clayton, I think, is going to call a timeout. They will, trying to get on the board here to get some momentum at the end of the half. Remember, Jay... The Comets do get the football to start the second half. This is a big drive for momentum, Chris, for confidence, but also, too, to get back in this ball game. If you can score here, then come back after halftime, get another score. This game could change the momentum, could switch to Clayton. But again, here, I've been impressed. They haven't given up. They're playing physical right now. They had the one big play in the passing game. But this drive has really been maintained because of their ground attack. They don't have, have not run it a ton, but that's because their running backs have all been injured. And Coach Jing said, you know, not more, maybe a blessing in disguise. Certainly didn't want to have the hurricane. But by not playing the game on Thursday or Friday last week, gave some of his guys that were banged up a chance to heal that would not have played last week that's playing tonight. Yeah, this is the point in the season where everybody's banged up. Whether you're hurt or whether you're still playing, everybody's feeling fatigue, bumps and bruises. So it is a good time, kind of a mini bye week for your guys to get refreshed, not only physically but also mentally. So essentially last week became the bye week for both of these teams. They do not have a game tomorrow. They will take tomorrow off and then get ready for their next opponent, which for night, which for Clayton, is a big one against West Jackson a week from tomorrow. Timeout is over. Final 32 seconds of the half. Two timeouts for Clayton. Parrish on the keeper. And he's going down. Kelts on the tackle for a loss for the Trojans. And another timeout for Clayton. They have one left with 20 seconds left in the half. So you lost five there, Jay. If you're the comments, do you go to the air here on now third and goal from the seven? This is a situation with only 21 seconds left. You've got to take a shot at the end zone. And you can stop the clock if you fall short. You've got two downs to try to score, and you need a touchdown. A field goal isn't going to do a whole lot for you in this situation. You need to get seven points. Stay with us for our halftime coverage coming up in about 21 seconds. A lot of great things to get to at halftime. Should be exciting. It's been an exciting first half, especially if you're a Garner fan. Great homecoming so far for Garner. The fans are excited. They are. The players, one of their best games of the season. Well, it's only a half, Chris. So That's you right. want to finish this out for both teams. The scoreboard matters at the end, but for both teams, even there's a huge deficit for Clayton. You still want to play like this is a 0-0 zero -zero game to try to get back in here, but also create good habits as well. Clayton, three of nine on third downs tonight. Comet's taking a lot of time here. And they want to reset the clock, I think. I think they want to put 23 back on the clock. They do, 23 seconds. And now we're ready to go. Swat camera, the running back. Play action, pressure, and another sack. 
Davion Carrington with the stop. There is a flag, I believe. Yeah, no, it's just a timeout call by Clayton. Chris Carrington coming on the blitz again. We saw him force a safety on an earlier possession here. Coming off the left side of the line of scrimmage from his DB position, flying into the backfield. And Clayton again, another huge loss, forcing a fourth down. How about this goal line stand for Garner after you give up the 45-yard pass to get down into, to your own five? Now you've pushed Clayton back. What, almost 15 yards. They look like a defense that wants to maintain that shutout. They yeah. do not want to have any points scored on them tonight. Garner's had back-to-back -back shutouts over the last couple of weeks. They defeated Harnett Central 52-0, beat East Wake 49-0, beat Southeast Raleigh 25-6. to They've only given up six points over their last three games. Matthew Butler was quoted in the local paper here saying, I think our defense is a little bit underrated. I don't think so anymore. <laughs> We're taking notice, and Absolutely. they have speed on that side of the football. Oh, yeah. And up front, their defensive line holds up <laughs> the offensive line, but the secondary can fly in on their corner blitzes. Clayton going to go for it on fourth and goal from the 16th. Pressure. Looking for oh. Carter in the end zone. Nobody's there. There is a flag. So let's hold the phone. Could be pass interference, and we'll give the Comets new life with nine seconds left in the half. Still awaiting the call from our officiating crew. We're gonna make sure that everyone agrees and they get it right. That's one thing that's for sure. <laughs> Here's referee Strickland after much deliberation. He wants to deliberate some more. Maybe it's a hung jury. Oh, oh false start. Oh, we're still deliberating. This is becoming a bit comical. I mean, obviously somebody saw something because they threw the flag, right? There's no uncatchable in high school football. I'm not sure what the discussion is, but it, it, I don't know if it's over where the ball's going to be placed or who it was on or what it was. But again, the decisions are being made very slow right now. And it's, it's putting a halt to the ball game. You're, you're getting teams out of their rhythm for sure. Yeah. Interrupting the flow, it's taken an hour and a half and we're still not done with the first half. And after all this, what we summarized 10 minutes ago is pass interference on guard. Well, that's the biggest thing is you want to have a consistent flow to the yeah. ball game. You can hear fans up in the stands getting upset because of the, the pace and things being stalled out. I, mean, I appreciate them wanting to get it right. I'm all about getting it right. But just do it in a timely manner. Clayton still facing fourth and goal. Low snap, and Lizer just falls on it. And Garner, after all that, still gets the football back with six and a half seconds left in the half. Well, Garner's defense holding on strong there. A lot of credit to them. They are put in a bad situation after that big play, that big passing play by Clayton, the defensive line. The linebackers, second, all three levels there played together, did their job, held Clayton out of the end zone at a huge stop and momentum stall for Clayton right there, not able to get any points on the board before half. Single safety back there for Clayton. Garner just going to run it to end the half. Edie fighting ahead and gets out near the 30-yard line for the first down. And clock will stop to move the chains. When you look on the scoreboard clock, there is a tenth of a second left. So Garner has 
barely enough time to snap it. There's a great look at the clock. They run off the final tenth of a second, and the teams retire to the locker room after an impressive first half by Garner. The Trojans with a 35-0 lead right here at the break. We'll have to Halftime coverage in just a minute. Before we do, let's head down to the field and say hello to Chantel Jordan. Chris, I'm here with Jeff Dunbar, the athletic director here at Garner. And now 35-0 going into halftime. Not a bad homecoming for the Trojans out there tonight. So speaking of the homecoming, tell us a little bit about the activities that have gone on this week and the parade today. Well, it's been a great week. Uh, you know, we have had to prolong homecoming because the storm came through. So uh, uh, Miss Jill Cotton Jim has done a wonderful job coordinating, keeping it going, a lot of spirit. Uh, we had our uh, parade today, a pep rally, so culminated a good good ending to homecoming. Great, and I know the old Garner has since been torn down. They're rebuilding, so you guys are here at South Garner. What has that transition been like? And I know you guys aren't here for very long, so. No, it's a two-year move, but uh, you know our goal here is to continue the traditions, as we saw with homecoming, uh, keep our identity, uh, keep that tradition of excellence that Garner Athletics is about and, and, and get home. You know, that's the goal is to get home uh, with that same hour, tradition of excellence. And now how have you kept the traditions going a year away from home? Well, you know, a lot of coaches will talk about the past. Uh, we coordinate with a lot of people.